Good morning, everybody. We looks like we just got our live stream started as well. So all right. So thank you so much for joining us today. We're kind of gathering up a few people and uh, you know, letting everybody get on here for just a minute. Be just a second. I got to have all the right hosts and co hosts and all that kind of thing set up. Well, I hope you had a good uh, week. Uh, I woke up to a surprise uh, sleet yesterday. It was 60 degrees the day before, and then we had sleet and, and a combination of snow yesterday. So it got pretty cold, froze a lot of my garden that I had worked so hard on. So, uh, don't know what situation you're in with the weather, but it's always changing. You can always su su suspect and plan for change. All right. So I think, like I mentioned, we're letting a few people come on, but we are going to be talking about alpha-gal, which is a little bit connected to Lyme's disease. And I hope you'll uh, stay with us and learn a little bit of information because what I wanted to share the most is that people are not learning about this from their doctors. They're learning about it more from other people and passing the word around. So uh, that's the importance of you being on so that you can share with other people. And our co-hosts today, um, John and Steve, both of them are learning about it and have some experience in that. So it is getting to be a problem worldwide, not just in the U.S. So um, anything that you want to say before we get started or just kind of we'll, we'll go ahead and I'll start showing you some ideas that I uh, came up with and learned about myself. I am. <clears throat> Wow, there's so many little buttons to click here. Thank you for your patience. I think I got it done. <laughs> this uh, person needs some help from the younger set once in a while on clicking all the right buttons. So again, we're talking about alpha gal. And what I wanted to really start off with was just a little tidbit about something called the mortal oscill oscillation rate. And that's what the Wave Watch is all about. And that's how it connects with different pathogens and different things that may be popping up that we haven't heard about before. So basically, we're talking about the Wave Watch and some of the different things that it can do with a, a thousand different settings. So this phenomenon that I started off with uh, is a widely unknown scientific phenomenon, basically, although it, you'll find out that it did come from Tesla, but every single structure of DNA has a natural resonance that when amplified can be used to effectively destroy any microbe. So that's why we're kind of giving you an idea that the Wave Watch is set up to do that. So this is a one cell organism. They actually have the different pictures of it. And they're showing that it was exposed to 1,150 hertz square wave, uh, frequency until it broke apart. So it's self amplified. And I think that is really kind of interesting and something that we need to grasp. So they can measure the frequencies of almost everything. And I shouldn't say almost, they can measure the frequencies of everything and anything that you can think of. And so if it is a um, bacteria, virus, parasite, whatever, any kind of a um, pathogen, they can show you 
that a single cell or a you know different kinds of organisms can be destroyed. So again, the mortal oscillation rate was originated with Tesla and later perfected by Dr. Royal Raymond Reif. And so this is the same principle as uh, when we destroy a, you know, a glass with an opera singer singing. We've all seen that. It sticks in our mind. It's just an image that we know of. So every variation of life has a specific frequency that when oscillated, will destroy the structure like a crystal glass. And I'm reading that just word for word because it's it's really interesting to know and to see how it was written up. So again, Tesla is credited with this. But guess what? Dr. Royal Raymond Rife, who has had a huge history, and I've kind of talked about that before, um, basically put together many tools and these all measured the mortal oscillation rate of so many frequencies that were could be used for different pathogens. So Rife is considered the person who measured most of those ideas. And the measuring still continues today. But basically, uh, he's considered the father of frequency medicine, which is what we're talking about when we talk about the wave watch. So we have some rife type frequencies that are on the wave watch. So the wave watch has frequency libraries for all kinds of microbes. Doesn't that just kind of make sense? So this is a wearable technology. And these are uh, libraries that you can access. They're more cost effective. They're non-invasive. There's less side effects. They're easier to update. They just have to measure a new problem or, or a concern or a mutation. And we can uh, things can be updated. And then don't forget, I talk a lot about this, but sound travels faster than chemical waves. So these can go into your body at a rate of 4.3 times the speed of sound, where chemical waves are very slow. They're about a foot a second. And gosh, I need to get that calculated. How slow is that? But that's why the uh, Wave Watch has been very interesting working with different microbes and pathogens and things. So to get to the whole topic today, we're going to be using different frequencies that I'm going to show you and just try to educate you a little bit and share some ideas with you about um, the uh, idea with alpha-gal, which I haven't fully explained yet, but it is related to Lyme disease, and you may have already heard of it. But, you know, to me, it's pretty simple. Springtime is Lyme time, and that's what we need to be thinking about. So even the newspaper, or excuse me, even the television, different channels are telling you a little bit of information. So we want to read this one kind of carefully. So doctors often miss symptoms of meat allergy li linked to Lone Star ticks. And this is from the CDC. So at least 40% of doctors surveyed had never heard of the alpha-gal syndrome a tick-borne illness that can cause a life-threatening allergy to red meat. Now, if you read down a little bit lower here, this alpha-gal syndrome has affected thousands. And I think that's what I wanted to tell you the most, thousands. So they say maybe half a million people. And it was never heard of in 2000-ish, you know, right around the turn of the century. It was never heard of but we have this tick-borne illness that's on the rise and causing lots and lots of problems. So I actually just captured a picture rather than showing you the whole video, but it's kind of interesting. This says it all. We are not learning enough about it, and that's why I emphasize to start with. I hope that you can stay and watch this or share it with your friends because this is what is making a difference in people's lives. They are saying that doctors don't know enough about it. And so people sharing it with other people has been, been more helpful. So to be very specific, the alpha-gal syndrome, excuse me, I'm going to change this a little bit. The alpha-gal syndrome is very serious and it's an allergy to meat and it occurs, you know, 
in people who've been, been bitten by certain types of ticks. And usually the more times you've been bitten, the more the possibility increases that you could develop the alpha gal. So um, ticks are little, you know, parasites that feed on the blood. And so this is how they could get, it could get into your system. But this is different from Lyme disease. It's, it is not the same thing at all. So the saliva of the tick contains a sugar molecule molecule that's called alpha gal. You know, I don't know why they didn't name it something like sugar gal, but alpha gal <laughs> is what we're talking about. So it's a sugar molecule that gets in your blood and then you become allergic to meat. So this can be very sweeping. It can cause so many problems. And um, we are finding that this is getting to be more and more drastic and they are adding more and more symptoms as the years go by. So this is the little tick, the alpha, or excuse me, the Lone Star tick. And they used to blame it all on the Lone Star tick, but I'll be explaining a little bit how things are changing. So I do have an alpha gal testimony and I don't know, John, do you recognize this person? You went to school with her. Mom, it's been a hot minute, but uh, <laughs> I think I might, but why don't you keep going? Yeah. All right. I, just, I do nothing appreciate like when you put me on the, yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing like putting my son on the spot there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I should have warned him. So anyway, this is a testimony. Uh, my husband, Shane, went out and I realized it's pretty small and, um, you know, but it, it's pretty in depth because she gives you step-by-step -step ideas. Um, my husband, Shane, went out to put up a deer stand in August of 2021 and found himself in a nest of ticks. He spent the next hours and then even had even the following couple of days removing them. He quit counting when he had removed 400 ticks from his body. As a farmer and outdoorsman, he tried to shake it off as a freak episode, nothing to worry about. Well, we quickly discovered he was having severe stomach pain after eating beef and that pork led to almost instantaneous vomiting. We knew we had problems. I quickly started to do research on alpha-gal, which suggested there was no cure, just maintenance. I was not satisfied with that option, at least not without a fight. I contacted Mrs. Bamber, my teacher from middle school. So this is uh, Lori Jalin, and uh, I knew she had left teaching and had really spent some time studying Lyme disease. I also knew she would be willing to think outside the box with me. So um, a few years prior to the incident, we had had some accidental success in relieving Shane's severe seasonal allergies by kombucha consuming bone broth for every meal for two months. That led me to believe that with some professional input, we could at least make some progress fighting this monster allergy of alpha gal. We visited with Linda. I did a, a screening on him. I'll try to go through this. Uh, we watched, or we coupled her advice of increased minerals, a detoxifying tincture, and the wave watch, limes folder with what was basically the GAPS diet for two months. He had a couple of other health situations going on in addition to that. But after the two months, we gradually begin the process of working mammal meats back into our diets, starting with tiny amounts of beef broth in foods. When that didn't create distress, we stepped it up to, to a taste of meat and then continued. By Thanksgiving, he was able to, meet, to eat mammal meats again. This was not an easy two months. And I've already mentioned you know, that this is really a tough one. It required tons of self-discipline, but compared to a lifetime of anxiety over accidental exposure and restriction from foods, this was nothing. We have met lots of people with alpha-gal since this time. To date, we have not met anyone who's been able to overcome it, but we have also not met anyone willing to try to do the hard work. Shane is living proof that it can be done. So here's one example. Uh, intentional work to heal the gut and hearty doses of prayer coupled with the body reset offered by the Wave Watch has been a miracle cure that we will 
are still celebrating with every bite of a hamburger we take. How's that? It's kind of long and sorry. And I, I really needed to read the whole thing to you. Maybe you've been reading a lot faster than I am. But uh, people don't usually believe Shane had this, especially when they see him set and eat a piece of steak. I wanted to be sure that I to build the validity into the story. We still have your scans to prove it all. We are so thankful for your Wave Watch and have been using it constantly. So this is from 2021, and she just sent this to me, uh, you know, over the weekend so that I could put it in this presentation. And so he's still doing okay. So, uh, you know, that's a word that you might be able to say that Aflagal has definitely gone away for him. I can't claim the cure, but she can say that, okay? And this is what we're looking at is that how do we work with this? Because this is an allergy and people say red meat, then you, you know, some people stop there. But look at all the things that have meat in them that can set off people to, uh, you know, convulsions. Um, you know, the list just goes on and on of the terrible, terrible symptoms that they have. So uh, if they're taking pancreatic enzymes, they're derived from pigs, so they can get sick on that. Gel capsules are from uh, a meat base. Vaccines that contain gelatins, you know, so somebody had a new vaccine, they can get very, very sick. If they've had heart valves from cows or pigs, <laughs> that, you know, all the time. Even foods that contain gelatin, such as marshmallows, jelly beans, and jello will set people off who have an allergy to alpha gal. So you don't think about meat being in those foods, do you, on the left-hand column? Uh, you can get sick from just eating the meat that we're thinking about. Uh, goat, buffalo, or venison are added in there, obviously, with the pork and, and beef. But medications are huge, too, because they do have some things like that. Natural supplements that are made from red meat could set a person off. So people start to really have to be so careful uh, when they have this condition, although they may not know they have it. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that. Uh, so carrageenan, this is an additive. It's used to thicken and preserve foods such as uh, drinks, uh, such as nuts, milks, meat products, and yogurt. So even that product sets people off. And then again, the gelatin and the cow's milk, as well as many personal care and household items. And I didn't actually find a complete list of the personal care and, and household items, but the list is endless. So we're just, you know, they're kind of phrasing it, oh, it's an allergy to red meat. But we don't think of all the places and the products and the things that we put on our skin that could have this compound in it that would set us off. So this is getting to be a huge problem for people. Now, these are some weird things about it that I kind of put together and I adapted it from a much longer article from thermofisher.com. But uh, originally, the alpha-gal syndrome was found in the Lone Star Tick, but now eight ticks have found it. And what have, have been found to be passing it? So what I want to actually have you think about is how many things change as the years go by. So more and more information is being found out about it. Um, I have talked about Lyme's disease a couple of times last year, and I would like to talk about it this year again. So next week, I'll be having another webinar specifically to Lyme's disease. This one is just more on, on alpha-gal with a few things about Lyme disease woven in. But um, it is so important because they didn't know what Lyme disease was. They had to discover it, quote, unquote, so this is a disease that started in the 1970s, and they found a group of teenage boys that had developed rheumatoid arthritis, and they sent a team to study that, and it took them seven years to tie down the fact that it was from this tick what is, you know, was causing the problem. Now, what they fail to tell you, and here I am kind of a conspiracy theorist, but what they failed to tell you at that time was that they discovered it in Lyme, Connecticut and the surrounding area. 
That's why it was named Lyme disease. It was named Borrelia burgdorferi after the last name of the person who, you know, led the um, group that found the uh, tick disease. But again, I'm emphasizing they forgot to tell you that there was a germ warfare lab in this area that was experimenting with these bugs. So since the 70s, Lyme disease has spread across the U.S. Now, they are saying it started with the Lone Star Tick, and now we have eight other ticks. But I want you to do a lot of research and some reading and, you know, feel comfortable that this is definitely a disease that is a natural disease, because at this point, I'm not really satisfied that it's a natural disease. How does it just happen to start in the 2000s? You know, we would have known way back in the 1900s if people were vom projectile vomiting after they ate red meat. This is a new disease that has started for some reason. So help me out out there. See if you can figure out anything that might have caused this. Is it completely natural or is there something behind it like there has been with Lyme disease that now they are admitting and there's complete books written about Escape from Plum Isle is one of them, you know, about how Lyme disease spread from Lyme, Connecticut across the U.S. And of course, it did spread natural. The ticks were on animals and deers, and it spread over the uh, course of that time. But it didn't necessarily stay that way. It did, I mean, it didn't necessarily start that way. So that was a long introduction there <laughs> to let you know just the first one. It's associated with about eight different ticks now. Now they're saying that there's a blood test and it's taken an average of seven years for some people to be diagnosed with alpha-gal syndrome. And I think that's really sad because they are saying there's a blood test. But let me tell you that there is supposedly some testing for Lyme disease and that is not really working at all. It is a, a test to make sure or to see if your body's making antibiotics to fight off the uh, Lyme's disease, and your body does not do that. These are stealth pathogens and your body will not fight them. So it doesn't make antibodies. So that test is pretty worthless, you know? So supposedly there is a test for it that diagnoses it right away. Um, bites from chiggers can lead to alpha-gal. Now that's a new one. I had not heard that before. So uh, they have said specifically with Lyme disease, it's only from ticks, but everything can be carrying it. So they are specifically saying chiggers can lead to alpha-gal. And another, uh, you know, just a tidbit weird thing about it is that they actually discovered alpha-gal when so many people in a drug trial became allergic to it. And so they studied that and found the compound that was being injected by these ticks. Uh, it's easily confused with IBS. So a lot of people are having IBS problems, more and more and more people. And uh, it is not IBS. It might be the alpha-gal. Uh, again, it's from the guts and the saliva of ticks. That is not how Lyme disease is passed. So it's a little bit different. Uh, it can, uh, can develop or start attack and symptoms from just inhaling meat fumes. So some people are so sensitive if they have it that they can just be around someplace where meat fumes are obvious and have an attack. Uh, this one was the one that I laughed at because I'm from a farm and I used to raise pigs. My family had pigs. They have bred alpha-gal free pigs. That's pretty interesting. I don't know where to find those, but I did see that. Um, because people are craving their bacon. I guess that's what it was, most of all. Uh, many tick bites over time can develop sensitivity. So if you're out in the woods all the time and you get a, you know, 10 tick bites one time and, you know, 10 another time or two, and, you know, it just uh, can add up. Um, I think it's a rare case when maybe you get into 400 tick bites like my uh, testimony did, but Maybe it's not that rare. I don't know, you know, but even just a few ticks here and there can add up. And uh, there is a crossover allergy that I think is very strange, too. So some people have a pork and a cat dander syndrome, and that is being confused with alpha gal. So I thought that was very interesting, too. 
Another idea, which is kind of hard to, to listen to, is that there have been many wasted exploratory surgeries done. So if it's taking seven years to diagnose alpha-gal, you know, there's been a lot of, of things done if people are that sick because of the symptoms of it. And they are searching and trying to find out what's wrong. And so, so many surgeries have been done. And again, several of the comments from uh, different uh, medical associations were saying, we're not sure why, because there's a simple blood test, but these people were having exploratory surgery and then found out that they had alpha-gal. So, you know, um, make sure that you do realize or that you pass on to people that there is supposed to be a blood test that works fairly quickly. Then you want to educate yourself because look at the one I put in the large letters. People find out about it from other people more than from medical tests. So alpha gal is information that we can share with others and that we certainly need to be doing. I mean, that's a fact. <laughs> we are learning more about it from each other than we are from the medical community or medical tests. And that was actually mentioned on the first uh, slide that I showed you um, from the uh, article on TV. Now, Cleveland Clinic says there isn't a cure currently for alpha-gal syndrome. Work with your healthcare provider to find ways to avoid triggers and stay healthy. So I kind of like the idea of what I showed you to start with. There's a mortal oscillation rate. If they can measure the frequency of these ideas and we can put the frequency in your body, there might be a possibility that something would change. And that's exactly what happened with the testimony that I shared with you. Even though they're saying there is no cure for it, they're working in a different way. So all of you that are on here today are open to so many ideas. Um, we're open to uh, looking at ideas and sharing it with others. So if you're around somebody that doesn't know what's wrong with them, you know, hopefully, I'm not saying that we're all medical doctors, nobody is, you know, but we can share. It's just been proven that people are learning about it more from each other. So these are some symptoms, lots of hives and an itchy rash, nausea, vomiting, heartburn, indigestion, constipation or diarrhea, a cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, drop in blood pressure, swelling of the lips, tongue, and eyelid, dizziness or faintness, severe stomach pain. Now that was just, you know, one area that I saw, and this was from Yale Medicine. Um, can I put you on the spot, uh, Steve or John or Vienna? Do you know any other test, or excuse me, do you know any other symptoms that we should add to this? No, you've hit it pretty much on the head. Yeah, same. Okay, all right. So, you know, but these, you know, this severe severe stomach pain and the nausea or vomiting is unlike anything you've ever seen. It's not, it's different. It's sometimes it can be projectile vomiting or, you know, for all, all day long, all night long, that kind of thing. So um, very se severe problems can develop. <clears throat> and um, don't forget, it is three to six hours after eating meat or other dairy products. And sometimes true allergies are quicker. You know, so that's how they're trying to differentiate it. So maybe if you eat meat and you wake up in the middle of the night vomiting or with some of these problems, that would give you an idea. It might be from the Lone Star tick or from, you know, tick problems or the alpha gal rash. But so do, you know, really help anybody that you're around that is uh, having some symptoms or if you're having these symptoms, kind of uh, start thinking through how soon after you've eaten or you've taken a medication, or you've put something on your face that might have uh, something in it, a pigmentation or something or other that would have the uh, sugar protein from this tick in it. Any questions uh, that I should answer, John, or anything? I haven't looked at the screen. You're doing all right? Okay. So um, I wanted to start by suggesting this right off the bat. We are not taking care of our bodies in the easiest manner that we could. 
maybe is the way to say that. And I became very concerned years ago, uh, probably about 15 years ago, when so many of my clients were coming in who had Lyme disease and their only um, reach, um, they had only been told that they could start antibiotics. That was the answer. And that the antibiotics would last up to two years. And that is a very dangerous program to have two years of antibiotics in your system. It can cause havoc in so many different ways. And so I did a lot of research back then and I found this protocol and I've added to it a little bit. But when I originally found it, and I, I tried finding it again over the weekend as I put this together. Um, I could not find this protocol, uh, but basically it was instead of doing two years of antibiotics, this place was suggesting that you do these steps here. So, you know, yes, you have a huge problem. Make sure you are going to the doctor, make sure you're doing your research. But also I would suggest that you jump in with this idea here. Make sure you're drinking lots of water. That is a huge thing. Make sure on clean water. And then the second thing is one that I've talked about time and time again. Load up on unrefined sea salt. So we're talking about Redmond's, Himalayan, or the uh, Celtic sea salt. And you can actually get uh, three quarters of a teaspoon minimum a day as your body allows. So um, Big guys can actually need up to three teaspoons of unrefined sea salt a day. And we've never had that our whole lives unless you are a believer in the unrefined sea salt. We have also went with the idea that we don't need salt to get off of salt, you know, and the list goes on and on. But what we've done, we have depleted ourselves of 60 to 80 minerals and nothing works if we don't have minerals. So our amino acids don't work, our enzymes don't work, our vitamins don't work, min and you know do not work a lot of times if we do not have the right minerals. So start with the unrefined sea salt. Then this was the second thing that was really emphasized was to take three uh, tablets of vitamin C and I suggest the Cataplex um, C, and this is my standard process. Uh, make sure it's a whole food vitamin C and then a whole food vit vitamin B. And so uh, with each quarter teaspoon of salt, so you're loading up heavily on unrefined sea salt, Cataplex C and Cataplex B. So just those two ideas were what was originally said, suggested by another source on the internet. I'm not saying it was me. I'm not trying to take credit for it, but I, I couldn't find where I got that from originally 15 years ago to give them credit. But this is saying that we should be doing this. It would be stronger than antibiotics, you know? So think about this. We ought to all be doing a little bit of this all the time. It's springtime, ticks are coming out. So if you want the easiest way to protect yourself, load up on more uh, salt, unrefined sea salt, and more uh, vitamin C and B vitamins, okay? Now, the fourth step here I have added myself, and that's to take iodine. Iodine, especially the Lugol's iodine, has been used successfully for over 200 years. And you start with a, a couple of drops and you can increase it. And if you have trouble, if you think you're having a metallic taste in your mouth, you're, you feel like you're detoxing too much, you neutralize it with vitamin C, salt, or a chocolate bar. Have fun with that. So if you think you've given yourself too much iodine, you just neutralize it by uh, taking more vitamin C or salt. But that is something that I added to this because people are so low in iodine. A fifth idea is using bone broth, but that is obviously what you do not want to do with alpha gal. But just to let you know, there's a difference there. And then again, I've had this for 15 years. Uh, the last idea would be to detox a couple times a week with hot baths and sea salt. And this was before I actually had the uh, Wave Watch. So we can detox quite a bit easier on the Wave Watch, but it's still really good to take those hot uh, 
detox baths too. So I want to tell you, and again, one more time, I'm not saying that this would replace the two years of antibiotics. I'm saying that that was a suggested idea so that maybe your body would be stronger, that you could uh, support your immune system. And so that at some point in time, you wouldn't need antibiotics because again, what they're going to rush to is antibiotics. They don't know anything else to do. It's, it was mentioned, you know, previous on a previous slide that they, there is no cure for it according to the medical community, but they would give you two years of antibiotics, you know? So uh, that is kind of important to have an idea in mind and you could start this right away. And I do have, many um, slides on unrefined sea salt and the importance of that. And if you, there's several books written about it, and please do not worry that you are taking salt. If your doctor has told you you should not take salt, you know, there is a, uh, it's different. The doctor is correct, in my opinion, to tell you not to take the white Morton salt that has been stripped of the 80 minerals and, uh, aluminum added and a synthetic iodine. That is definitely correct. You should not take that and you should avoid all of those in uh, processed foods, but you need salt. Why do we have salt licks with our animals? Okay, so it goes on and on. So that is very, very important to make sure that you are realizing that I'm telling you to take a different kind of salt that has up to 80 some minerals in it. So this is what you could also do. You could couple that with a Wave Watch. Most of you who are on here are Wave Watch users. And so this is a complete playlist. Now it doesn't say Alpha Gal anywhere in here. They do, it doesn't seem like anybody has uh, figured out or maybe published. I have not been able to find uh, the frequencies for alpha gal. But what we already have is a testimony from somebody who used these frequencies and was very, very satisfied with their alpha gal turnaround. So we somehow hit the mortal oscillation rate with this collection of frequencies. And that's why I was trying to show that to you right off. There are so many things that have a uh, resonation and this was one that did a, a really good job. So I tell you, it's springtime. You're going to be out in the yard. You're going to be out, you know, walking, whatever it is. You can pick up ticks and you don't even realize it. Or you could maybe now get bit by a chigger, you know. So um, this could be a preventive, protective idea. Very, very important to share with people. Play that for protection. Then... These are some other ideas for Lyme disease or the alpha gal, kind of tie it in together. You want to detox using that whole folder. Remember, I've already made those playlists for you. You don't have to make your own. I've got a playlist for detox. I've got separate playlists for bacteria, for parasites. And uh, I have a playlist for you for emotions. <laughs> I couldn't hardly get that one out there. The emotions are so important too. And then lymph nodes. Lymph nodes is a, an area inside organs, if you need to know where that's at. And Lyme hides in your lymph nodes. Now, even more important than that is to play dental. Lyme hides in your dental. Don't forget that I've told you before that each area, each tooth has up to three miles of roots. And every time I say that, it just blows me away how unbelievable, you know, uh, God made us. Every tooth has two to three miles of roots. And you can look this up and find it. So, I mean, they've named uh, 75 different roots in one tooth, you know, and whoever discovered that root, that name gets named, you know, it gets named after him. <laughs> so I think that's just another uh, amazing story. So what they do know is that Lyme disease hides in these especially if you get an antibiotic it you know it goes deeper and deeper into different organ systems and morphs and changes and so the Lyme disease will hide in your dental and then if you get stressed or if something happens then it can work out so that's why Lyme disease is really really hard to get rid of that's why frequencies can just dig deep into things and make a huge change where antibiotics may not be able to 
And then all of the organs, but especially the pancreas, the gallbladder, because Lyme loves soft body tissues and the thyroid. The thyroid is huge also. So I know a lot of people who have had their gallbladder removed. <clears throat> and when I was doing quite a bit more testing, basically it seemed like they all had Lyme's disease. And gosh, they didn't actually even know it. But when we started going over the list of symptoms and things, um, that was definitely a connection. So I could see that people were losing their gallbladder right and left, probably because of undiagnosed uh, Lyme disease. So this is huge. So you have you have tools on your wave watch. So this reason that this is so important uh, is because Lyme disease, which now you know is connected with the alpha gal that we're talking about, um, has been um, a conglomeration of different ideas. So Lyme is a spiral shaped bacteria and it's rel related to syphilis, basically. It's a spiral shaped bacteria. And guess what? <clears throat> These spiral shaped bacteria do not react to antibiotics. They are immune to antibiotics. But again, what's the number one thing you get if you go to a medical doctor for Lyme disease, it is antibiotics for two years. So don't forget that little tidbit right there. Other bacteria do react to the antibiotics especially, but remember a couple of weeks ago, I just talked about how dangerous the antibiotics are. Anyway, Lyme's disease is connected with parasites and viruses and bacteria, the spiral shaped uh, Borrelia burgdorferi. They are now connecting it with yeast and molds. And the list just goes on and on again. So uh, again, be very, very careful, but you have to do so much research and you have to do it. Lyme's disease is very dangerous. And sometimes people have had it for 20, 25 years and may not know what the problem is. And then somebody else could get bit by a tick and actually pass away within a year or so. So it runs the gamut. And um, there are 350 different uh, problems, um, diseases associated with Lyme's disease. I'm not sure where I have that. There it is. 365 diseases have been connected with Lyme disease. So uh, again, you can be very, very sick. You can go to doctor after doctor. They may not realize it's Lyme disease. So if you have been bit by a tick, you may get a... Um, a red rash, a bullseye rash, or you may not. So it is very huge to think about. Now, I've been saying that chiggers can pass it, but I also wanted to let you know that they know that mosquitoes and other insects pass it now. So one of the main things that they are not telling us about the Lyme idea is that it is contagious. It, it can be passed on. Um, it's been found in all body fluids. So uh, I saw this especially for some reason in Amish families that, you know, one of them would get it and then they would all have different connections with the 365 uh, diseases that are connected. So they weren't all sick in the same manner, but for some reason it had been passed. So you can actually get on an airplane, which I've mentioned before, you can get on an airplane and somebody on that airplane can have Lyme disease. And if your immune system is down, you could get off that uh, airplane with Lyme disease. And then it just takes off from there. Because again, think of everything that's passed on an airplane. You're breathing that same fluid, you know. So it's very important to realize that and keep your immune system boosted. And to me, salt and water is one of the main things. So I carry around salt. I have bags of salt in every vehicle that I'm in. You know, I have it in my office. I have three different kinds at my uh, uh, house and things like that. So carry some salt around and drink some water and throw some vitamin C in with it. And you've got an immune boost right there. Now you also have the Wave Watch, you know, so you can do it that way too. Um, now I've already talked, you know, a little bit in depth about it could have been an engineered disease and it can stay in your system for years. Um this is the last thing that I wanted to point out. Testing is inaccurate. I already told you about that. 
but treatment is not covered by insurance. So if you have chronic Lyme disease, they're going to tab you and say, oh, no, 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 no. And it is not covered by most insurance. So this is a huge problem. So you're going to have to do your own work. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We have to educate ourselves. We have to share this with many people. And we have to let others know because that could be very, very um financially devastating to any families, let alone the sickness involved. So um, I don't know if I'm going too fast or if there's a lot of information to absorb, but uh, I thought this was an excellent slide. And uh, this was on Facebook Lyme disease posters. Okay. And uh, it was just excellent. I couldn't have done a better job myself. This is why they have so much trouble with Lyme disease or any of its forms or even the connection with the alpha gal. This is a bacteria is so smart. It changes into several different forms. It fools the immune system and evades antibiotics. Isn't that what I told you earlier? Especially if you get antibiotics, it can change from the spirochete form, which is up here, the spiral-shaped bacteria. And then all of a sudden, it coats itself somehow with a biofilm and or an L form or a cyst form and changes completely. It hides in your teeth, hides in your lymph nodes, and those kind of things. So this is why it's springtime, it's Lyme time. We need to be emphasizing this and kind of checking our, our children that are out <laughs> um, in areas. Uh, we need to be taking care of ourselves. Now, everything that I saw on the uh, medical side, I guess, was you know to spray yourself down with a spray. I like the idea to cover yourself, you know, and check yourself for ticks. But do you think you should be spraying yourself with a spray? Is that something that you would feel comfortable doing? I'll tell you what, I've seen just as many problems with those sprays and the toxins in the sprays. You know, so be careful with what you choose to spray yourself down or your children down with it can be very, very toxic also. But, you know, cover yourself more. You know, one suggestion was even to, you know, wear boots and tuck your pants into your boots and uh, put masking tape around your boots, <laughs> you know. And I like that. That made sense, you know. So we have to start protecting ourselves because we are not really being told how bad Lyme's disease is. Um, you know, another example Again, I could talk for days and days about Lyme's disease, but another example, they tested um, 14 people with Parkinson's disease, and when they gave them something for Lyme's disease, the Parkinson's tremors went away. So again, I do have the list of 365 diseases. I've showed them on another one and may show those again next week. So, so many of the diseases that we have now are really could be connected to Lyme's disease. So protect yourself, pass the words around. Now, just about to finish up, but I was really excited about this. This was in something new that I hadn't seen, so I learn. I learn every time I uh, get some information to share for others. Um, there was a study showing that stevia in a liquid form, especially the glycerin extracted stevia tinctures, and I tried to put that on the side in bold, that these extracts outperform standard drugs used to treat Lyme disease, like doxycycline and other antibiotics. So they did a, that did a better job. So I hope you know how important stevia is for many other things, but it is great. So uh, they have connected it with the ability to uh, break down breast cancer cells. So that's pretty interesting, isn't it? So if you're using some sugars, stevia is the one to use, not the one from Cargill. <laughs> Find a natural stevia and uh, start putting that in your system. 
So that was something that I learned. So I'm going to order the glycerin extracted stevia and I'll, ha I'll you know, have to do a search because I don't know which brand I might come up with, but um, I'm going to start carrying that along with my salt <laughs> so that I have some really easy things to do if I have, you know, uh, think I've been uh, close to, you know, that if I've been bitten by a tick or if I worried about a mosquito bite or if I was out in the wilds and then I had my wave wash. So we need to be doing all of those things or a lot of different things. And as you look, there are so many natural ideas for Lyme. There's all of these ideas. You can find so many things to do. Um, I already had the stevia supplements on here, but I didn't know that they had actually done a test like this one, how it actually kills Lyme's disease better than some of the uh, other medical treatments. So I thought that was really great that they had that study. So I think I'm kind of wrapping it up. Don't forget to pass around some of these ideas. So, you know, the Wave Watch, this is why we like it. All right, John, got, got some comments. Go ahead. Three questions that I think you could answer for us. Uh, Shannon would like to know if ivermectin or fenbendazole could help with this pathogen. Um, there is a possibility. Those so far have been a little bit more connected with parasites, but they do have some natural healing abilities. And so I'm, you know, they're fairly natural. To me, they're better than a medication. And so it definitely might be something to try, but I don't have any feedback on that or did not see anything when I was looking for uh, information about Lyme disease and alpha-gal. So, okay. All right. Debbie um, would like to know if we've already covered shedding. I think she's speaking specifically maybe for Lyme or potentially for alpha-gal uh, and wondering about wondering about that. I'm trying to get out of here. Don't know what's going on. That's okay. You're doing great. Uh, one more, maybe. Oh, there it is. Get the right click there. There we go. Um, shedding. Um, I think that's a word when I was talking about the Amish, you know, uh, you can really see that they pick it up so easily in their homes. I, I hadn't connected it. And then I started doing more studies. And yes, uh, so when you're on an airplane, I'd call that shedding. You know, so if you if you caught me saying if you're on an airplane and somebody else has uh, Lyme's disease or possibly alpha gal, they haven't connected that yet. But that doesn't mean that more and more information doesn't come out, you know. So you want your immune system to be as good as you can when you're traveling, when you're going somewhere. So make sure you're using some of those ideas that I try to suggest. Carry some salt, have some vitamin C, have some stevia. Uh, you got your wave watch. If I was just on an airplane the other day. I played immune support the whole time. And I also played, you know, coronavirus type stuff. Um, so those are things that you can do because, yes, it does shed. I, I use the word contagious. They okay. don't want to tell us that. And Debbie that asked that question originally, she has raised her hand. I'm going to see. I'm, I'm going to say allow to talk. So, Debbie, if you have a question, I've given you talking permission. Uh, you'll have to unmute if you'd like to talk or if you're happy that we answered your question, that's fine, too. So um, while she's looking and thinking about that, uh, I will um, make. Let's see. Uh, Michaela asked, uh, do you recommend a specific parasite protocol to do alongside of our Wave Watch detox folders? Um, we actually have a parasite um, frequencies. And they would have the mortal oscillation rate. Don't forget that phrasing. They have the mortal oscillation rate. And I have uh, screened 100 people. I did my own little test. I can't say it's a medical double-blind study. But out of 100 people, 42 people had parasites as their worst problem. And then this was when I was developing the Wave Watch. So I taught people how to muscle test. And they picked out an herbal remedy. And that's the way I had my system working for about 15 years. So they picked out an herbal remedy and they would have probably taken it for three or four months, maybe two to three bottles. And then they would have come back in and I would have rechecked them. And then their parasites might've cleared in a long, you know, 
it, it, it depended three to six to nine month time period. But with this group of, of 100 people, they uh, 42 of them that had parasites is the worst problem. Also use the Wave Watch for 30 minutes on the parasite folders. And then within 30 minutes, they rechecked muscle testing, which we've talked about. You might have to learn a little bit, but they re-muscle tested and their body did not want the herbal parasite remedy. And when I rechecked them on the machine that I call the biomeridium that I had used, it did not pick up parasites any longer. And a lot of them had some different, you know, changes. It wasn't super obvious uh, in that 30 minute time period, but the machine could tell that the parasites were gone. It seemed like 42 out of 42 times. And I had never seen that in 15 years of testing. So I was just blown away. People were so interested, they came back, some of them came back in a week, somebody came back in a couple weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, and three months, so it's kind of scattered out, and we still did not connect with parasites after three months, and we had used the Wave Watch once for 30 minutes. So I think you have a really valuable tool in your hand for parasites, but if you want to take parasite remedies and herbals, you certainly can do some studying and usually find those at a health food store that are fairly good for you. So that's your choice. They can be very expensive and, you know, there's a lot of uh, cleansing and detoxifying, but I used to have tons, you know, my whole back wall in my office would be uh, uh, filled with different uh, remedies and those have really cleaned out now because of the Wave Watch. So that's all I can tell you. You can use them if you want, but you do have a fabulous tool in your hand if you have the Wave Watch on your wrist. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Uh, Debbie, um, did you still have a question you'd like to share with us? Let's see. If you do, you can just unmute and we'll, we'll welcome you anytime. Um, let's see. Um, Linda, Teresa, um, Teresa is wondering when you use the Wave Watch for parasites and or detox, do you get kinds of any symptoms while you're detoxing? Uh, most people have not. And I have showed this before. I think I just showed it a, a couple of weeks ago. But uh, someone from that group of 42 went home and within six hours, they passed a foot long parasite and they sent me the picture. <laughs> so I have showed that before. And they said that their bloating went away. The symptoms were good. It wasn't negative symptoms. And so sometimes when you're using some of the herbal things, there are some, I'd say, you know, kind of nausea and you know, headaches and stuff like that. And people don't don't seem to experience them uh, as much on the Wave Watch. I'm not saying that it's, it's not possible. It just doesn't seem as um, prevalent with the Wave Watch to have detoxing symptoms. All right. Debbie's having a hard time unmuting. Um, hmm. I think Steve's been coaching her on that. Um, Yeah, I don't have her muted on here, so. <clears throat> we'll see, all right. We're still Can looking. Can she unmute now or? No, she's not been able to. I'm going to see if she answers back, though. Okay, uh -huh. all right. So does anybody have any testimonies or any information they could share about AlphaGal, since it is getting to be more and more, you know, over half a million people are experiencing problems with this. Uh, the person was just on the setting for 30 minutes. She was one of my 42 test examples. And when people are in an office setting, they have 30 minutes, you know, yeah, I can donate 30 minutes of time for you to test this, you know, so all of them were on it for 30, you know, maybe 35 minutes, but that was it. And so she went home and six hours later, a foot long, foot long parasite passed. Okay. One of the raised hands. We're still looking here. All right. Um, okay, Debbie's got her hand raised, and I'm going to ask her to unmute. Well, huh. we're working on it. All right. Yes, I have a, 
I have a request. There are several people asking how they can get the recording of this. And we have that wonderful new button on the reviews page of wavewatch.com. Actually, two or three new buttons. I thought that'd be great if you let people know about that wonderment. Okay, well, go ahead and keep telling about it. You can probably describe <laughs> it better than I can. This is Vienna, and she's part of our customer support team. And Steve is also on customer support. So you get to see him live. <laughs> not just hear their voice. So uh, the new buttons, when a, a member of the team has put her hand to the keyboard and made some beautiful lists, it's a spreadsheet. So there's a picture at the top of the reviews tab on wavewatch.com. Mm -hmm. Just below that picture, it's a long oval in the beautiful Wavewatch turquoise. And it's alphabetical list of topics. And you click on that. And then the center column is in a black font, uh, all of the topics that have been covered. And then on the left is two spots you can, they're clickable links. So all you have to do is find your topic and then click. And it's the WaveWatch site, Facebook, Rumble, and <laughs> what's the fourth one? Um, anyway, a fourth source for getting to those. Oh, YouTube, hello. And then the second blue button to click on is a list of pathways. So you've got a topic, some, someone might say, I can't find arthritis on here. So you go and find your topic and then there'll be up to five options of places go to chronic and you know, you just, you can just trace the pathway down. So, and I can't remember what the third button is. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can share it. I'm not a very good oh. screen share, but let me see if I can show that. I actually so, just put link, oh. the link in the chat so people okay. can uh, get that uh, right now uh, in our chat. So Can you see that now? So that's what it looks like. So you go up, when you go to Wave Watch, you go to reviews, and then you go on down and alphabetical list of Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble topics. And then these are a couple more clicks that were just added that might help you search things a little bit better. So then you can click if you want to watch a topic on allergies, you can go to these sites. If you want something on Alzheimer's, you can click the different places. And we've tried to put them several different places, but we, we have quite a few topics. We have 80 some, is, I guess is what I'm saying. Are they numbered? 91. We're up to 91 different topics. Some of them are uh, duplicates or may have been uh, uh, section one and section two, you know, that type of thing. So anyway, I hope that is helpful to you. Okay. I think I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me? Hey, Debbie, we can. Oh. Oh, good. I don't know why there's not a picture, but um, I want to thank you for, um, I know you're a regular guest on Mike's show, but especially last night with, with his condition and everything. But I wanted to ask y'all about pets. And I know you've talked about it in the past as well. And the shedding I was talking about was from the other stuff, not, but also being in a plane and in restaurants or, you know, because I think we're all out in public a lot more. I have a, um, he just turned two years old, old English sheepdog that has developed a little bit of a bump on his back. And I am not comfortable with the vet just because there's some circumstances that have happened. And I put the wave watch the other night in his crate, praying that he wasn't going to do anything. I did not attach it to his, his, you know, leg or anything like that. But I just wanted to know if you thought, I'm not asking for, you know, healing over the, you know, <laughs> the the internet or anything else. But I feel like he calms down when I've got it on, if that makes any sense. So I, I'll, I'll end there. I know your time's about up too. Oh, no, we're good. Uh, we have had that idea passed on several different ways. Horses have calmed down, you know, okay. uh, and we've. Uh, and dogs definitely have calmed down. And sometimes the owner is petting them or sometimes they're a small pet and they can be held on the lap and the owner is playing anxiety for themselves and the dog calms down. And then one that really um, 
spoke to me was somebody that had five cats and she said they were the gnarly kind, you know? And she said, when she sat down and played something like anxiety or calming or, you know, soothing, something like that, that those cats would literally just jump on her lap and, you know, crawl up on the back of the couch around her neck. And they had never done that before. So that was very interesting feedback. So. Awesome. Thank you. And then did your dog have a, a bump? Were you, what were you trying to play for your dog? Actually, um, I don't, I think it was just the healing, the, um, okay. Yep. That the, would be a very good all purpose one. Yeah, yeah. A friend, a friend of mine had put something on for, um, the, the bowls, you know, the crystal bowls mm -hmm. and it was about an hour. And I put that on before I went to bed. And of course it made me sleepy, but I thought that would help as well. But yes. the bump, the bump showed up after he went to a groomer and he's not going back to that groomer either. Wow. Um, yeah, because he had some reactive behaviors. Anything else you suggest? You might try bones, you know, maybe something happened in his bone or spinal area, you know, okay. and there's okay. spinal frequencies that are for dogs too, you know, and then bone regeneration or, you know, bone, anything in the bone folder. Linda, I've got one more idea there to run the muscle ones as well, because if, if the dog was tense as a massage therapist, I find when people have chronic tension or even just sudden tension from an accident, my mom had a, a bump on her foot the other day and I, I don't move bones. I don't have that licensure but I just relaxed the muscles all around it. And in 10 minutes, that bone went back down. So using muscle relax on the Wave Watch might allow things to settle back in home. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I've got the magnet roller. Y'all remember when that came out about 20 years ago? And he loves that. Um, Nikan, I think, N-I-K-K-E-N. Do y'all remember mm -hmm. that? Yep. And, and that seemed to help. And even the ones you get at the chiropractor. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'll meet myself yeah. now. <laughs> Valerie Jolie, thank you so much. Here we're talking about Lyme disease. And, you know, we forgot to mention, hey, you can play Lyme disease. I mean, so many dogs and cats are out and who knows how they will react. So that's a preventive for the, your dogs once in a while, too, or your animals once in a while is the Lyme disease folder. So uh, that's huge. I mean, you know, we saw a little stray dog one time and it was just covered with huge seed ticks, you know, I mean, it was solid, you know, 500 on this little tiny dog, I bet. So, I mean, when an animal's out in the wild, they have Lyme disease or they have ticks problems. So, okay. Um, all right. I do not know which Stevia brand I'm going to get. I haven't researched that yet. I just found that information like five minutes <laughs> be, uh, before I started this program. So I had to put it in. It was so good because Stevia is such a natural product. I raced Stevia. I've raced it before and I throw it in my tea all the time. Not all the time. Sometimes it's honey, you know, uh, natural honey. Uh, but uh, the Stevia is going to be more regular because of, of some of the uh, ideas and the simplicity. Someone also asked, uh, when we have consistent head buzzing and it is not clear whether it is tinnitus or EMF sensitivity, what you would you run? I would run a small section on both of them. Think through things first, though. You know, so many people are having the tinnitus or tinnitus. There's two different pronunciations, it seems like. Um, you could think back to, you know, how many more EMF towers and or EMF products that we have around us and then how many more cell towers and it seemed like somebody the other day was having trouble with their head buzzing causing tinnitus but they knew that there was a new cell tower in their area so and then I just had a friend I don't know if I should say her name but uh, she said she checked on the cell phone I had previously told you that there's an app that you can check the amount of cell towers and her area had 458 cell, if I'm saying that 458, 459 cell towers within a three mile radius. And I'm in the middle of Kansas city and only had 49 in a three mile radius. So I was just blown away with that. So you might check, you know, you can just ask, you know, uh, how many cell towers are in my area 
and it will tell you. So if you find that you have lots and lots of them, that might be a, you know, a huge problem for you on the tinnitus, and they are tied together a lot of times. And I have one other thought on that, and it's I recommend it so often to people when I'm answering questions in on the customer service line. We can do so much for ourselves if we just make up our mind to be a noticer. You know, when when do I feel this? When do I notice this? Oh, I just walked past the the bank of an apartment building, you know, not not money bank, but a block of smart meters on the side of a apartment building. Oh yeah. Okay. Well then that's EMF related. So just if, if you notice your surroundings, oh, I just drove past a cell tower. Like you're saying, we can get some clues and then that can guide our choices on the wave watch. I love it. You have such good phrasing. <laughs> I like it. So think about what happened, what you ate last, you know, what you drove by last, you know, did you get sick when you put gas in your car? all those kind of things. Gas fumes make you sick. We have to be better noticers because we, you know, I think we're getting skeptical about going to the doctor and just asking one thing, you know, and I want to maybe close with just, or, you know, that we have time for a few more, but just an idea came up. I was testing on my biomeridian system that I've mentioned several times. And I had a, a little gal that the first thing my computer told me of 50,000 ideas was that she had styrofoam in her system. And I'm going, does that make any sense to you? And she thought a minute and she goes, oh yeah. She said, I don't like to wash dishes. She said, I just threw away all my plates and I just used those stacks of styrofoam. You know, you can buy them for, you know, she quoted, quoted the price. You can buy them for $2.99. And I just throw them in my microwave. <laughs> and then I just throw them in the trash and have to wash dishes. And she was so excited. But it was the wrong excitement because styrofoam is cancer causing and she was eating melted sty styrofoam, basically. Now, what medical test would tell you that that was her problem. So we have to be alert, you know, we have to be alert to some of these things and try to figure out what is what is going on. And if you want another idea about this, I had another one, I had a gentleman who came in and he was having all kinds of health problems and it said that he had all kinds of cleaning supplies, all kinds of cleaning problems. And it was a pretty sad story really. And immediately when I asked him if he knew about these cleaning supplies, he goes, oh, yeah, that's what I do. That's what my day is. He said, I clean up after my mother's dog that isn't house trained. My mother is 90 and she's having trouble with her diapers. I mean, I don't know how to say it. We're, we're all, you know, and he had his hands in things all day long that were toxic and my computer was able to sort through ideas and tell him about this toxicity. Now you could go to a medical doctor and I don't think they could, you know, give you some of those little fine tune ideas to clean up your, your body. They might give you a, a prescription for the ailments that you were having rather than say, Hey, you got to detox these toxins out of your body. Okay. Those were two just off the cuff examples. Vienna. Yeah. One other thought. The way that that machine finds that is it reads the frequency. So just saying, if someone's not like a doctor's not doing a frequency test, they're, they're not likely to find it. But anyone mm -hmm. who does have a means of doing a frequency test, yes. all they have to do is see the number. I mean, it just pops mm -hmm. up on the machine, right? So that's the power of frequency testing and delivery. And you've mm -hmm. put it all together so we don't even necessarily have to go seek out that machine somewhere, the magic machine. You knew the frequencies from several sources, combined them together beautifully, put up to 30 frequencies under any given heading there. And so people are saved the possibly expensive step of going and finding out, oh, 1,233 hertz is present in my body. You can just... <laughs> Find your symptom on the Wave Watch, push the button, and breathe and enjoy. Great way to say that. All right.
Okay. Um, you, you have, okay. You, <laughs> two, two things. One, uh, Jennifer wants to know about uh, EMFs. Does she have any, do you have any more info about EMF present, prevention stickers? Uh, and for, Steve is going to answer that. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. okay. Um, you know, uh, Jennifer, uh, I, where is it? Um, I had purchased uh, an EMF meter, uh, major, you know, the measures, measures radio, uh, magnetic and electrical uh, interference. And, um, you know, for the most part, uh, most things like a Wi-Fi router, uh, a TV, those sort of things, it was not really doing a lot of, uh, it wasn't reacting very much to things beyond three feet or so. Remember, I was a kid in the 80s and it was always don't don't sit too close to the TV, right? Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm kidding, but, uh, you know, playing video games and stuff, Steve's nodding, he knows. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and there's something to be said for that. Uh, I can tell you your microwave, uh, you want to stay six feet from that. Um, and, and, you know, these routers and things, uh, for sure, you know, three feet. So, you know, try to place those as far as you can. Um, and, you know, you, you wanted to work cause you can't, I can't hardly buy anything that's not, you know, Wi-Fi related these days. Um, but, uh, generally if you're, you know, more than three feet, um, from them, that helps. And then as far as stickers go, um, I know that there are some different ones out there. I don't have personal experience right now. I'm actually looking personally looking for a phone case that will um, will protect a little bit better. Uh, the funny thing was, and I didn't really realize this, but I was I was demonstrating to one of my friends how this EMF meter works, and I was trying to show him that his phone was going to make it go crazy, and it didn't. And I said, what's what's wrong here? So then we switched and I put the EMF meter on my phone and the EMF meter went crazy. And so um, I've got to get that same case that my friend had. Uh, and I, I'll give you all an update when I find that exact one. And thank you, Shannon, for sharing that as well. And then um, Toby, uh, a few people have questions about you. You've been, you're probably going to sell a bimeridian machine today, uh, Mom. <laughs> uh, a few people have some questions. Um uh, about the bimeridian and then valerie um says um that gia wellness has phone covers so thanks for sharing valerie and so i did put a a, a link or an idea in about the biomeridian machine called it msa by international health technologies and you can go to that website and find different practitioners that might be in your area okay and lots of emf uh, brands uh, again, that's why I like muscle testing, because you could be at the store and you could have three or four different EMF protectors and you can stand right there and muscle test them using your cell phone. You know, if that's what you want to do, you can see which ones work the best with your own muscle testing. All uh, right. Any other questions? Or We may be just about uh, winding down. I hope that uh, you are... Uh, that maybe you have learned some new information about alpha gal because I certainly did. And remember the major idea from that was that people didn't learn about alpha gal from their doctors. They learned about it from other people just like you. So please let people know if they're having some strange symptoms and some vomiting and that kind of thing, maybe to check that up, check that out and um, share that information. So I hope you got enough information to share or at least to send them to this presentation. And the bio is the Biomeridian machine similar to the Quest 4? I'm not exactly sure on that. They all probably do work with frequencies. And thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Love my Wave Watch. It's my constant companion. Thank you. All right. Awesome. I think, I think that's all. It's very good. All right. Thank you for joining today. <clears throat> See you another time next week. I'll be up. Thank you. Bye-bye.